Hi, I'm Mark with Pro Acoustics, and this is Tech Talk, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between analog and digital mixers. Your mixer is an important part of your sound system. It's basically where all of your audio is routed, and it goes from point A, the source, to point B, C, D, or E, wherever its final output is, whether that's speakers, a computer, a CD player, whatever you've got. Um, and we're gonna talk about today the differences between some of these. In front of me, I've got some analog mixers. We're also gonna discuss some digital mixers and tools that you can use with the digital mixer. Um, but let's start with an audio mixer. A live audio mixer is known as a mixing, a mixing console or a soundboard. In front of me, you can see an example of one. This is a Mackie Pro FX8. This is my own personal one. I use this mainly for mixing microphones whenever I'm out DJing. Uh, today's mixers can accomplish a lot of these functions very easily. This Rolls mixer does the same thing as this mixer, except it doesn't have all of the EQ functions. So the old debate that we've got going now is, should I go with an analog mixer or a digital mixer? The digital mixer sounds like what you want to use, but sometimes it's not the right setup for you. Analog mixers have been a lot around for basically as long as audio recording has been around. In the 1900s, mixers began entering the pro audio world, and as they went along, the technology, one, got smaller. You can see some of the older mixers, they bigger than this table here, and they may have only had eight channels. Today, this eight-channel mixer fits easily on a desk. So as technology has progressed, they've gotten smaller, they've gotten more affordable and easier to use. Starting around the 21st century, we started to see the entrance of digital mixers. These are digitally processed mixers that will often interface with a computer. Some of them have built-in screens on, on the mixers themselves that give you feedback, access to effects and processing that an analog mixer just isn't going to have. So what is an analog mixer? Even in a world of digital technology, analog mixing consoles have held on as a popular solution. Part of this is the cost. It's easier to get a hold of, easier to use. Each button on your analog mixer does one thing. If you can learn one channel on an analog mixer, you can use the whole mixer because each channel is basically a repeat. Another reason that these stay so popular is you don't need an IT degree and you don't need to know how to do any programming to get them set up. You just plug them in. Each one of these has a plug on the back. Turn it on, have your outputs connected to your speakers. And as long as you've got something coming through one of these channels, you're gonna have sound. So some of the advantages to an analog console they are cheaper to purchase. Uh, most of the time, you can get a mixer like this for less than $500. Analog consoles tend to be a little bit more user friendly. There's less risk of messing something up. If you adjust this knob here, it's not gonna permanently ruin a setting. To fix it, you can just go back in and turn that knob again and get it back to zero, and you're back to where you started. Some of the disadvantages to analog, a lot of times because they do have a lot more built into them in terms of material, they can be heavier. I mean, this console here is probably 10, 15 pounds. It doesn't look like it, but it is. This one here, it's still pretty dense. All of it's made out of metal parts. Inside of it, the electronics are metal. All of that stuff adds into weight. Finally, another disadvantage, if you've got a lot of channels with an analog console, you've still gotta have space for all of your controls. So that means they get bigger, so that can end up becoming uh, a problem whenever it comes to transportation. Another kind of mixer that we're gonna talk about today is a powered mixer. Now, I, I don't have one in front of me, but a lot of powered mixers will look very similar to this Mackie Pro FX8 I've got here. The only difference being that a powered mixer has a small amplifier, usually on the back or built in underneath, that you can plug in passive speakers to. Powered mixers will have a lot of the same functions as an analog mixer. Uh, they will oftentimes have EQ, you can add effects. The only difference is you don't have to worry about routing the audio to an amplifier, to a separate amp, or to powered speakers. You can route directly to a passive speaker, and depending on the rating on it, you can connect two, four, or six speakers oftentimes and still get great sound. 
Next up, we're going to talk about digital mixers. Digital mixers are used to basically take an analog signal and convert it to a digital one. These digital mixers come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and applications. You can find them looking just like a mixing console here. Some of them are rack-mounted units similar to this. But instead of finding a bunch of knobs on front of your digital mixing console, what you'll typically just have are a bunch of inputs and outputs. Most of your control is going to come from a device like a smartphone or a tablet. And I can show you right now. This right here is the Mackie system for control. You can see each one of these is a different level adjustment. If I was to go through here, I could cycle through my different effects. As you get into bigger digital mixers, you can run across some very specific challenges that are only going to be present on a digital platform. When you're trying to do things like processing, let's say you want to revert back to a setting that you had set up for a specific vocalist or for a specific guitarist or drummer, finding and knowing where those settings are comes from repeated use, practice. It's not something that you're just going to be able to walk up to and say, oh, this is dance setting for vocals and click one button and it goes back. A lot of times you have to go through a series of menus on the mixing console itself. Some of the things I really like about digital consoles is that I can go in and set specific settings per person. I kind of touched on this earlier, but if I know that I'm going to be doing a mix for a band at a venue, I can have all of their presets already saved into the console from a previous time that I have worked with them at that venue. When we're talking about digital consoles, there's a lot I love about them. A few things that stand out as something that might be a bit of a disadvantage for you is that a digital console is typically going to cost you more. Another thing with digital consoles, as I've mentioned a few times, is that there's a certain amount of programming that you have to learn. If you're not an experienced audio engineer, this might take you a while to do. I would recommend for anybody going into a digital console just sitting down with the manual going page by page and learning each of the functions. That's the quickest and easiest way to know what you're doing. Each digital console on the market will oftentimes have their own way of looking, appearing, and operating. Next thing we're going to talk about are line level mixers. Um, a line level mixer is just that. It's a mixer that takes a line level signal and routes that signal to your speaker system. You see here in front of me, this rolls as an example of a mine, uh, line slash mic level mixer. These are your line levels. These are your mic levels. So everything from here, you could consider a line level mixer. Another kind of mixer that we talk about is a microphone mixer. A microphone mixer is also just what it sounds like. It mixes the signals from microphones. So you will oftentimes have a mixer about this size with a bunch of microphone inputs on the back. All of the wires will come and meet. You end up routing each signal into the back of the mixer, and you got one output that's going to whatever speakers you've got. Oftentimes, you will see that a mic mixer has the ability to be a line mixer. You just have to check for the back. There's usually a switch, which on the back of this one, you can see each one of these microphone inputs has the ability to be switched from mic to line. And all you got to do is push it in to go into line, push it out, and you're back on mic. So when you're going to get a mixer or purchase a new mixer, you need to ask yourself a few questions. First off, how is this mixer going to be used? Are you going to be using this for recording or for production work? Are you going to be using this for just playing audio, maybe for a band or for students in a ball field, something like that? Are you going to be using just mic level signals? Are you going to be using line level signals? Are you going to be using a combination of the two? All of these can help factor into this, the decision process. Another thing to consider is, is the mixer going to be staying in one place? If it is, maybe you can use a rack mounted piece of gear like this. If it's not going to be staying in one place, maybe you just need something a little more rugged with some extra padding built into the sides, similar to this tabletop I've got. These kinds of mixers, typically, you can put in a road case and carry with you wherever you need to go. And you don't have to worry about the damage as much, but it's something to consider. Another thing to consider is how many microphones or instruments do I need to connect? So a lot of times I recommend that folks end up buying a channel that's slightly bigger with a few extra channels. That way, if in the future they decide, yeah, I do want to plug in a, another device or I want to plug in an instrument through this, you've got the room to do so without having to buy a separate mixer. So that's about all that I have on mixers today. If you found this video useful, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, 
If you have any questions whatsoever, go ahead and stop by ProAcoustics.com. Once again, I'm Mark. This has been Tech Talk. Have a great day.